I was reading one, one book and I came across uh, a, uh, an interesting words from C.S. Lewis, uh, an Irish uh, writer, by, a very good writer, a broadcaster, a theologian. He wrote this, The glory of God and as our means to glorifying Him, the salvation of human souls is the real business of life. C.S. Lewis, the author and the writer of the famous the book of uh, the Chronicles of Narnia, what he was actually saying is the glory of God and the salvation of human souls. <clears throat> the only way to glorify God is when we reach out and we preach the gospel to other people. And when people are saved, that's the best way of glorifying God. God is glorified when people are receiving the gospel of salvation. You may be here probably asking, what's the purpose of everything, Pastor Boots? What's the business in life? What's the real mission and what's the real purpose of life? It's funny, I, <clears throat> I was reading this, uh, an, an, another book, and I came across a story of a headhunter. So the story that I'm going to share with you today may, may sound familiar for many of you. Uh, you remember the time when you came, came for an interview, for a work interview. This headhunter said every time he would interview a corporation executive that he would hire for another firm, his strategy is to, to disarm the person, the, the one he's going to interview, because all of the, most of the time, a person that will be interviewed is actually uh, nervous. And then because of your nervousness, sometimes when the interviewer would ask you, uh, uh, how old are you? And we answer a different answer. Like, how, what's your name? And we say, 16 years old. <laughs> because you're so nervous, you are not paying attention to questions. So this headhunter would say, I would disarm the person and I would feel him relaxed. I would try to make him feel relaxed by taking off my uh, jacket and loosening my tie and I would offer drinks, coffee or juice to that person. And then I would ask him about how's your family, what sports do you play, do you play basketball? So he would just uh, uh, deviate the, the talk to disarm the person so that the person will not be nervous. All of a sudden, I would lean forward and, uh, and talk to the person straight in his eye and I would ask him, What's your purpose in life? And according to this headhunter, most of the top ex executives that he interviewed would be speechless at this point. You all of a sudden, you don't expect the question of the, the HR or the one interviewing you like, what's your purpose in life? If we reflect about our lives, we were born on a certain day. Our parents fed us, raised us up. And then after so many months and years, we started to walk learn to speak, and then we find ourselves enrolling in a nursery school. You maybe still remember the pictures. Nursery school. After, after some time, we find ourselves primary one. I can still remember my son, Haniel, bringing him to school on the first day of his primary one. I said, Haniel, this is not forever. I will bring you for several months, but time will come. You have to go alone. And then time flies. You see yourself, your, your children, or we see ourselves turning into secondary. High school na tayo. If you still remember, and time really is so fast, then we enter, enter into college and then university, and then we find work, we find our job, our first job, and we're so excited. And then you hear, here's, your, here's your first salary, and you start counting your salary, and after some time, you're no longer satisfied with that income, and you look for another job that would give you more income, and then we jump from one job to another, and then we meet this person, and we get married, and then honeymoon stage, and we travel from one place to another, and then the Lord blesses with a child, and here we are again. It's a cycle of raising another uh, child, and seeing your children go to school, and all the natural process of development, and so on and so forth, and then we ask ourselves, is this what life is all about? It's just like an empty routine. Is there a purpose? Or are we just like boats, in the, a sailboat in the ocean, sailing to nowhere? We don't know where are, we are going and what's the destiny of our, of our trip. There, that's why some people would find life as there's no meaning and they would end their lives because there's no purpose and meaning. I think this is a good question to ask ourselves. What's your purpose in life? Have you ever considered that question? Why do you think you're here? What's your role in the big picture of life? And then this headhunter said, one day, I had this interview. His name is Bob. <clears throat> and then again, the routine, <laughs> he took off his, his jacket, 
loosen his tie, offered him some coffee and drinks, <clears throat> and then asked him about sports. How, what sports do you play? Do you play basketball? And when he noticed this, this man was already relaxed, and then he leaned forward and looked at the person in the eye and asked him the same question, what's your purpose in life? And to his surprise, after many years of this job, she said, this guy answered him, my purpose in life is to go to heaven and take as many people as I can with me as I can. You know, for the first time, this headhunter said, I was speechless. For the first time, after many years of interviewing people, this is the first time I was speechless. Because obviously, this man looked at everything as a means for a higher end. There is a higher purpose in each and every one of us. We were not just born to go to, go to college to study, to meet someone. Life is more than that. There is a higher purpose for each and every one of us. And I hope that we will all discover what God has in store for each and every one of us. So if you're taking notes, the title of our conversation in God's Word today is The, the Father's Business. You know, I was reading chapter 2 of Luke. Uh, pre several Sundays ago, we've learned about the surrounding stories about Christmas, isn't it? That Jesus Christ was born and there were many stories connected with it. Elizabeth, Simeon, Anna, and so on and so forth. So, the father's business. And in this particular chapter, in this particular episode in Luke's account, it is very, very interesting because only in the Gospel of Luke, we were given a glimpse of the childhood days of Jesus. Actually, this account was not present in Mark, Matthew, or neither in John. It's only, it's only available in, uh, in the Gospel of Luke. And Luke was a very detailed person, and I will show you later on some details that are important for us to consider. But maybe you are asking today, Pastor Boots, what's the significance of this message? Why should I listen to you? No, it's important. If you are young people, if you are young people and you're listening to me today, I think this message is very important as a heads up for you so that when you enter into <clears throat> a, a, a higher uh, level of your life when you start to go to college or work, you will not waste time. You will know that there is a purpose for you. That even when you venture into business or into jobs from one job to another, you know that these things are just means for a higher end. And for all of us who are married, it's never too late. There is always a time to align ourselves to the Father's business because God is inviting all of us to be involved in the Father's business. Now, chapter 2 of Luke, verses 40 to 52, I found this interesting truth that I want you to bring home today. Discover your identity to uncover your mission. It is important that we understand who we are in God. Then we will be able to understand why and the purpose of why God has given us life. And I will show it to you from the text today, from the passage that Luke highlighted this to us, that it is very important that we discover our identity in God, that we may understand or uncover our purpose or our mission. Let me go through Luke chapter 2, okay? But before I read verse 40, <laughs> remember Jesus, he was on the eighth day he was circumcised. When he was born, his parents, Joseph and Mary, brought him to the temple to be circumcised. And he was given the name Jesus. I can still remember the angel appeared to Mary and said, Mary, you will have a child and you will, sh you will call him your, sa your son's name. You will, will be Jesus because he will save his people from sin. Eight days after Jesus was circumcised according to the law of Moses. And then after several days, he was brought again to the temple for the day of purification. And then here comes Simeon who was, who, who was given a word from God that you will not die until you see the consolation of Israel. Here comes another prophetess, Anna. You're familiar with Luke chapter 2. She said to Mary, your baby will be the cause of the rise and conflict in Israel. Many will believe, but many will also fall away. And Mary just cherished that in her heart. After that, ito yung sinabi ni Luke. Now, I want you to pay very, very close attention because he would give us a lot of details so that we may understand presenting Jesus in the humanity side or being, going through the cycle of human development. Here comes Luke in verse 40. He said, And the child grew and became strong, and he was filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. After they returned to Nazareth. What was Luke trying to say? The intention of his writing, the Gospel Luke, is actually to introduce to us, and his focus was on the humanity side of Jesus. 
that He is the Son of Man. So if you read the Gospel of Luke, the main focus ni Luke is to introduce to us the human side of Jesus. So this is the purpose why Luke was writing this. And he gave us, he gave an emphasis on the childhood days. Why did Luke inserted this episode in chapter 2? Because he wants us to know that Jesus Christ submitted himself to the natural process of human development. Any of us, like our children, learn how to develop himself by saying physically he became strong. Luke was trying to say he physically he grew his body. I, I would ask myself, maybe you have asked yourself, si Jesus Christ ba, he also learned how to do his first step? Of course. He learned his second step. Did he learn his ABC? Did he learn his alphabets in Hebrew and in Greek? Of course. He was filled with wisdom. Mentally, Jesus Christ, look how the writer summarized to us that Jesus went through the process of the natural human development. And the grace of God was upon him. Now, very, very important po, before we jump to the next verse, to understand the humanity of Jesus and at the same time, the deity of Jesus. Every year, according to Luke, his parents, Joseph and Mary, went to Jerusalem for the feast of the Passover. What was Luke trying to say? That his parents were devout, fulfilling the requirement of the law. Jewish culture or customs require all Jewish male. There were three festivals that they were required to attend, every male. Passover, the Pentecost, and the Tabernacles. Now, after the first century, many Jews, because of the dispersion, were living far from Jerusalem. And for them to travel three times a year back to Jerusalem would be very tedious, would be very expensive for some. That's why people who are economically challenged, poor, not so well off, like Mary and Joseph probably, they would just choose one feast to attend. And they would usually choose the feast of the Passover because it's the grand uh, celebration of the deliverance of Israel from Egypt. When he was 12, now take note of this. Luke is a, is a detailed historian. Why do you think he would mention 12? Why did he choose to jump from eight days of circumcision and then summarize everything in one verse and then jump when he was already 12? When Jesus was 12 years old, old, they went to, up to the feast according to the custom. Now, I would ask myself, why 12? Does it mean that this is the first time Jesus would go to Jerusalem? The Bible is quiet whether during those times every year that they would bring Jesus. Usually the female were not uh, required. Women were not really required to attend festivals. But Mary would go. And here, probably this is the first time Jesus went. Luke said 12 years old because for the Jewish culture, once a boy turned 13, he became officially adult. So 12 is a preparation for a Jewish boy to become son of the law. He would now be responsible in fulfilling the requirements of the law. So parents would bring their 12-year-old boy and let him experience what the temple in Jerusalem is and let them experience what it means to be part of studying the law, the Torah, or the five books of Moses. So this is the purpose why Jesus was brought 12 years old. But 12 years? The details of that, those years were hidden for us. Jesus, the Luke's intention is to tell us that he went through the process of human development. After the feast was over, I asked myself, how long was the feast? How long does the feast last? Usually, it lasts the whole for a week. But they're required to stay for two days. The Feast of the Passover and the unleavened bread is connected. It lasts for seven days. Now, after the feast was over, while his parents were returning home, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. I, I highlighted the word there. It was Jesus who stayed behind. But they were unaware of it. Now, when I was reading this verse, I said, wow, home alone. Di ba parang home alone? Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. Now, it's not a joke. To live, a, to live a 12 year old boy in a city, in a crowded city, probably about 25,000 people celebrating all pilgrims going to Jerusalem, crowding the Jerusalem area for the Feast of the Tabernacle or Feast of the Passover. And Jesus stayed behind, but they were unaware of it. Now, before we judge Joseph and Mary, kasi nung binabasa ko po yan, ang unang 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 pumasok sa akin, ano ba naman yan? But before we judge Mary and Joseph, look at the next verse. <clears throat> Why? Thinking, uh, this is interesting, thinking he was in their company. 
No, because there's a large group of people traveling. Thinking he was in their company, they traveled on for a day. Usually po, uh, when they travel with their relatives and friends, usually po, the women and the, and the children were allowed to go ahead first. Because of their pacing is very slow. And the men would follow after an hour or two because the men would walk fast. And they would catch up somewhere. When they reached this place for a day, they walk already for a day, then they began looking for Jesus among their relatives and friends. Maybe G Mary and Joseph are saying, Oh, honey, Mary, where's Jesus? I thought he was with you. You know, I thought he was with you. Have you experienced that? <clears throat> Husband and wife, mag na, Ay, akala ko kasama mo. And to their surprise, when they did not find him, so they stayed overnight and returned to Jerusalem. Another day of travel. Okay? So one day, second day, to reach Jerusalem again. And look at this. After three days, when I was preparing this message, I was saying, where did Jesus sleep? Where did Jesus eat? Siguro ako, maluloko ako. I don't know where to call. There was no 911 call in Israel during that time. Where will you go? Pastor Bush, there were, are there robbers? Are there, were there uh, molesters? I don't know. But to leave your 12-year-old boy in a crowded area like Jerusalem, it's not a joke. I believe, it, just like any other parents, Mary and Joseph would not sleep that night. If they, could not, if they can just travel back to Jerusalem, they would do that. You would not wa waste a time to leave your son. Pagdating nila sa Jerusalem, where will we start? Jerusalem is big. It's not a small city. Where will you start to look for Jesus? After three days, they found him in the temple courts. Ang laki po ng temple. The temple courts is the outside courts. It's big. It's huge. There were so many people selling doves, selling whatever. Ang dami. May mga money changers siguro. Can you imagine in your mind? They found him in the temple courts, but he found him in a place where all the young people would sit down and listen to a rabbi or an elder at discussions about the law. Hey, this is interesting. He was with the teachers, among the teachers, and he was listening to them, and he was asking them questions. Now, this is the usual description of a learner, a student. Please don't get this wrong, no? Jesus? Di ba anak ng si Jesus? Kailangan pa ba niya mag-aral? No, no, no. Remember, the intention of Luke is to show us that Jesus went through the natural process of learning and growing in the human development. So Jesus was there and he was not saying, everybody, Hoy, oh, oh, Rabbi, you listen to me, I am the Son of God. No, no, no. There was no like that. Jesus was there and really listening, like the, just like went, going to Sunday school and learning the, about God and, and the story of God in Israel, the deliverance of Israel. Maybe they were being discussed in the temple. Ito na yung drama, mga kapatid. The next verse tells us, Everyone who heard Jesus was amazed at his understanding and his answers. While I was preparing my message, I was toying with the idea, I was imagining, buti na lang, no one asked him this question. If someone in that company asked Jesus a question, like, di ba when someone is, when a little boy is saying something, wow, the knowledge of this boy is already for college. Pang university na itong batang ito. Ha? The tendency you will always ask, how old is this boy? Di ba? The tendency you will, boy, how old are you? May imagination. Kasi pag may nagtanong sa kanya, how old are you? Jesus' answer would be, this is just my imagination. <clears throat> uh, my, my age, in my mother's side, I am 12 years old. What do you mean? In my father's side, are you ready? I'm the Alpha and Omega. I, I don't know what will happen. All of them were amazed at his understanding and his answers. And look at this. When his parents saw him, ikot sila ng ikot sa Jerusalem in the temple courts, and they saw Jesus. He was sitting among the elders, listening and asking questions. They were, they were astonished. And his mother said to him, now, I was dramatizing this in my mind. Did he pull Jesus? Did he excuse, uh, excuse me, Rabbi, can I just get my son? In the middle of a class, or maybe he went to Jesus and pulled Jesus to the side and asked, excuse me. I don't know what happened here. I don't know if he, she whispered this. But Mary said to Jesus, son, why have you treated us like this? It sounded like a rebuke. It sounded like pinapagalitan niya si Jesus. Understandably, did you know my, why did you treat us? 
you didn't even tell us or you didn't even send a message. Three days, anak, three days, we are frank, frantically looking for you. We are worried. Three days. Son, why have you treated us like this? The context of that is, did you know, Jesus, what we have gone through? We were so worried when we were looking for you, we could not find you. We traveled for two days. We didn't know where to find you in Jerusalem. And here you are, your father. I don't know if she pointed to Joseph. Maybe Joseph was so tired. Why have you treated us like this? Your father and I have been anxiously searching for you. Anxiously? Oh, yes. Don't blink because the next verse, you'll be surprised. There's a twist and there's a play of words here. And I want you to capture the intention of Luke. Why Luke wrote this episode in his gospel. Remember, Luke's emphasis is to show us that Jesus went through a natural process of human development as, as a boy, as a normal boy. Look at the answer of Jesus. Why were you searching for me? Mom, maybe. Mary, woman. Mom, why were you searching for me? Huh? You're lost. And my wild imagination. <laughs> I cannot imagine Haniel will tell me, Why mo you I don't know, ano? But look at the words of Jesus because it's deep. This is very deep. Very deep, very loaded verse. Why were you searching for me? He asked. Didn't you know? Have you forgotten? Didn't you know I had to be in my father's house? Oh, 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 oh. Re rewind, rewind, rewind. Your father and I are searching for you. Didn't you know that I had to be in my father's house? In the King James translation, it says, that I must be about my father's business. What? Malali mo. Ibig sabihin, Mary, nakalimutan mo na ba? Have you forgotten? Because there's a play of words. A Bible scholar would say, there's a, why, why would Jesus slowly shifted the focus saying, as if saying, yes, but remember, I, have, I am. Because for the first time, for the very first time, the words of Jesus was recorded. The first words of Jesus was recorded. And for the first time, Jesus acknowledged and he was aware of his unique relationship with the Father. First time, Jesus called. That's why, discover your identity to uncover your mission. Didn't you know I had to be in my father's business? Maybe, I was just imagining, maybe Mary, for the first 12 years, no angelic visitation happened. No extraordinary miracles that happened. Jesus grew up as a normal boy. Maybe they have forgotten. Maybe somehow they have forgotten that this is a unique, this boy was not conceived out of human relationship. How can this be, Mary said, for I am a virgin. I am a virgin, Mary said, and the angel said, no, 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 no. Don't worry. The, the Holy Spirit will overshadow you and you will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, and he will be the savior of his people. Maybe she has forgotten that portion already. Twelve years passed. No extraordinary event that happened. No extraordinary angelic visitation. Baka nga nakalimutan na normal boy eh. Nadadapa, normal boy, nag-aaral, tinuruan ka ng ABC. Probably Mary would say, put your hands together, pray for the food. Because Jesus submitted himself to the natural process of human development. Because Luke is trying to tell us that Jesus is fully human. Remember that. Kasi God could have sent Jesus 30 years old na. Why do we have to wait for 30 years before Jesus Christ started ministry? Can you imagine what a wasted 30 years? No, no, no. Jesus, Luke, proved to us he went through all what we have gone through so he can be a good high priest who can sympathize with us. Alam niya kung paano lumaki. Physically, mentally, paano maggrow. Jesus experience everything so that he can be the best high priest and mediator between you and God, between me and God. Don't you know I had to be in my father's business? Why are you searching for me? Have you forgotten? Didn't you know I had to be in my father's business? Wow! For the first time, Jesus went through the human process of discovering God's purpose for him. Just like you and me, my brothers, there is a higher reason. There is a higher purpose. We have to discover our identity in God. Then we uncover our mission. Why God allowed us to exist in this world. Look at the next verse. But Mary and Joseph did not understand what they would say. Most likely they have forgotten it. Huh? A 
Ano daw sinabi? Nagtinginan siguro si Joseph and Mary. What did he say? In the father's business? What, in the carpentry business? Si Joseph kasi carpenter, di ba? If he's in the father's business, bakit meron ba tayong mga kliyente dito? Nakakuha ba siya ng contract? Nakakuha ba siya ng business? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe, maybe he was thinking, whose business? It's the father's business. Portion in Luke chapter 2 is crucial before chapter 3 so that we will understand why this man was heavily involved in the father's business because he discovered his identity. And that's why he launched with his mission in life. But Mary did not understand. Maybe they were going home. They could not understand. Look at this next verse. This is really, this is really inspiring. Look how Jesus' attitude was. Then he went down to Nazareth with them and was obedient to them. But his mother treasured all these things in her heart. Look at this. What a good example for our young people. You cannot say, Mom and Dad, I really love the Lord more than any one of us. More than any one of you, I will follow Him more than you. Eh, look at Jesus. Jesus, hindi niya sinabi kay Mary, eh, kayo na lang umuwi. I have to be in my father's house. Please go home, write me letters, we'll see you again next year. No, look at Jesus because he knew that he probably learned in the synagogue or in the temple that honoring your father and mother is pleasing to God even though, even though his parents seems to forgot or have forgotten the mission of his son, yet Jesus submitted to their parents, to his parents. Children, you will never be wrong if you submit to your parents and obey them. Because God, honor your parents, your mother and father. You cannot justify, I'm following God. No, 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 look. How can you reconcile this? Jesus knew. And yet, He inspired us. He submitted and He became obedient. Bumalik siya kasama ng parents niya. Hindi siya nakipagkatigasan kay Mary and Joseph. Said, ano ba yan? Hindi niyo ba naintindihan? Unang-una, hindi mo ako anak. Hindi. <laughs> Jesus was respectful. Young people, if there's something that you can draw, you can bring home, is look at the respect of Jesus. Look at the spirituality. That's a true spirituality. Because God has given authorities over our lives and one of them is our parents. You will never be wrong when you submit and honor your parents. He went back. He was obedient to his parents. But his mother, maybe when they were traveling, Mary was just contemplating. Oh nga, no? Maybe Mary was reminded, the angel, Mary, you will have a son and you shall call his name Jesus and he will be the savior of the world. He treasured all these things in his heart. Look at the next verse as we end. And Jesus, look again, summarizes the next 18 years from 12 years old to 30 years old. The Jesus, look, summarize, and Jesus grew in wisdom mentally learning the culture, learning the knowledge of his surroundings, learning from all this, the, the current events and everything, and stature, physically. Maybe he helped his father in the carpentry business. He grew up in the stature, work, obedient, and in favor with God and man. Look at this. What an example for us of how Jesus, even though he is the son of God, he was patient enough, operating on the timing of God, 18 years, alam ni Lord, it's not yet my time. I would submit and I would go through the process of natural development. He learned, he went to school, he learned, he learned trade, everything. And he win the favor of God. Spiritually speaking, he would read his Torah. He would read the Old Testament scriptures. He would pray. He would have a devotion in his own time. I'd probably attend the synagogue and, and grow up in his spiritual life. He did everything in the favor of God. There is a reason why the 18 years were not recorded in the Bible. Most likely because there are no significant events that would pertain to our salvation. There's a reason why Luke wrote this. And what is the main focus of Luke, why he wrote this? Is to tell us the first instance of Jesus' filial consciousness, his awareness of his unique relationship with the Father. That Jesus, just like you and me, there was a point in time in his life that he discovered his identity and then he was, unable, he was able to uncover his mission. In the human, humanity side of Jesus, he submitted to all the process of learning, going through 
the human process of development. Beautiful. Kumusta tayo? Tayo ba? Ni minamadali natin? Or maybe we're asking ourselves, why do I have to go through the process? Or maybe the question is very important is, have you discovered your identity? Who are you in Christ? What's the purpose of my life? Pastor Boots, there is a higher purpose, brothers and sisters. You have to, un- you have to discover your identity in God so that you will uncover your mission. It's only then you will understand the purpose and the meaning of life. You and I, by the grace of God, were saved by faith in Christ. We have become adopted sons and daughters of God. We too have relationship with God. We have to discover that. That we, were, we are not existing by, by merely an accident. There is a higher purpose. If I am the son of God, if I am a child of God, there is a reason why. When that, what is my father asking me to do is to be involved in the father's business. What is the father's business, mga kapatid? What's the father's business? After that verse, 18 years after Jesus showed up in chapter 3 of Luke and the succeeding chapters, what did Jesus do? He would say, I came to seek and to save which was lost. I knock, I seek, and I look for people because that's the Father's business, seeking for those who were lost. In our context, we're connecting people back to God. That's the Father's business. How are you and me today? Are we using our life? How are we? Are we just living with the earthly and the material things that we have that can only be useful in this earth? but has no eternal value. God is inviting you to be part of His Father's business, of the Father's business, because that's the only thing that has eternal values. When we give glory to God and we share the salvation of human souls, that's the real business of life. Listen very carefully. You and I were blessed by God tremendously with resources, talents, and skills. It's not an accident why you are working at your workplace right now. God sent you there strategically so that you will intersect with people's lives. Maybe the person seated beside you or the next cubicle. God sent you there. Bear witness. Tell them about the love of Jesus. You are not there for accident because you are an accident. God placed you there to reach out. Be involved in the Father's business. Remember the parable of Jesus. Someone who discovered the great pearl, he would sell everything for the sake of that pearl, the kingdom. When you find Jesus, when you discover your identity, you will be able to uncover your mission. You start to look at things as means in fulfilling the Father's business. You start to look at things as opportunities to invest and expand the Father's business. Maybe you're an engineer. Maybe you're an architect. Maybe you're an IT person. Maybe you're a nurse. Or maybe we are a helper in Singapore. It's not an accident why we are at our situations right now. You imagine you are living with a family in Singapore that you don't know. God placed you there. What can we do? I'm not here just to earn Singapore dollars. I'm here. I have a higher purpose. How can I use my situation now to expand or expand and invest for the kingdom or for the Father's business? How are you doing in investing and in expanding the Father's business. Maybe God bless you with so much resources. What will you do with it? God did not just give it to us for our own consumption. He wants us to be part of the Father's business. Because if you are part of the Father's business, the more He will pour out His blessings because He knows that you are partners with Him. Or are we just living for ourselves? Are you not tired of just living for yourself? It's just a daily routine. Is that what life is all about? We get old, we die. Is that the meaning of life? Or do you want to be part of something that is very, very important? Life will be meaningful when you discover your identity and you uncover your mission that I was born for a reason. And to be invited by God to be part of what He's doing in His kingdom is a great opportunity and privilege. Use your talent, use your resources, use your work wherever you are. Paul would say, you have been given the ministry of reconciliation. Use that. Maybe you are a friendly person. Use your being friendly in reaching out to others. Maybe you are a good writer. Maybe you are a good speaker. Why do you think God bless you with such talents and skills?
discover your identity and you uncover your mission.